Welcome to this video presentation on eye health, providing a lens for LPNs. This presentation will provide a broad understanding of vision issues, eye health, and strategies to promote patient safety. The CLPNA is pleased to welcome guest presenter Dr. Salma Kiani from the Alberta Association of Optometrists. Dr. Kiani completed her Doctorate of Optometry at the University of the Incarnate Word, Rosenberg School of Optometry in Texas, and was honored to be a part of the inaugural class of 2013, graduating on the Dean's Honor Roll. She also completed an Ocular Disease and Surgical Co-Management Residency at Omni Eye Specialists, affiliated with Salus University. She was faculty at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Science in Baltimore, Maryland, and taught optometry interns and ophthalmology residents, as well as caring for patients. She was recognized as a top doctor in the November 2018 and November 2021 issues of Baltimore Magazine. Dr. Kiani is currently the Alberta representative for the Canadian College of Specialties and Optometry Fellowship Working Group panel. She is also a fellow of the American Academy of Optometry, member of the Alberta Association of Optometry, and a member of the Beta Sigma Kappa and Gold Key Society. Welcome, Dr. Kiani. Thank you. Regardless of age, eye health and vision problems can impact quality of life. This video presentation will help you learn what to watch for as you support patients and how early identifications can reduce the risk impact and increase quality patient outcomes. We will cover the following learning objectives. Understanding the role and services provided by the optometrist. Identifying common vision issues which contribute to a fall or risk for falling. Understanding eye diseases and the co-management of other illnesses and conditions. Learning vision care fall prevention strategies to promote patient safety and locating resources and providing referrals to appropriate vision care health professionals. Let's begin with understanding what optometrists are trained and regulated to do. They can treat, manage, and correct disorders and diseases of the visual system, the eye, and its associated structures. They can recognize and detect diseases of the body, which might have effects on the eyes, and then help treat or deal with those effects on the eye. They also diagnose, treat, and manage conditions where the two eyes don't work together or conditions where the brain has problems properly using information sent from the eyes. Optometrists prescribe any topical or oral Schedule I drug in the context of eye care, handle removal of superficial foreign bodies from the eye in or below the surface of the cornea, help patients manage chronic eye diseases, and order lab tests, which includes net care access. Alberta Health provides coverage of eye care that includes routine eye exams for children until they turn 19 and for those aged 65 and over. Also, an eye exam is covered if an optometrist deems it medically necessary for acute onset of disturbance to vision, red eye infections for foreign body removal, management of chronic eye diseases such as glaucoma, macular degeneration, diabetes, and inflammatory conditions, monitoring of patients on certain systemic medications such as Plaquenil and Tamoxifen, and post-operative medical eye surgery visits. There are different reasons for people to have eye exams at each stage of life. The following slides provide general information on when and why eye exams are important. Six months may sound early, but this is when the optometrist assesses a child's visual abilities, ensuring the eyes are properly aligned, free of congenital cataracts, and developing normally. Using a retinoscope, which is a handheld device, optometrists can determine nearsightedness or farsightedness. Alberta Health provides coverage towards comprehensive eye exams until the child's 19th birthday. Parents or guardians are encouraged to book annual appointments. By watching how children, around two years, do simple tasks like stacking building blocks or assembling pieces, it can be determined if the eye-hand coordination and visualization skills are age appropriate. By this age, many of the vision skills required for lifelong learning are reasonably developed. It's also when many serious eye conditions, if detected and treated by this age, are reversible or preventable. As an example, Two is also the average age of children diagnosed with retinoblastoma, which is a type of eye cancer. 
It starts in the retina in the very back part of the eye. A visit between two and five is when the optometrist is checking the overall health of the eye and visual thinking skills. Between two and five is when it's important for a child to begin to develop fine motor and visual thinking skills. Fine motor activities include things like bead stringing or painting. Visual thinking skills include comparing two images to find slight differences or recognizing patterns. If challenges are being seen in these areas, recommending an eye exam would be in order. Children are great at compensating for a vision problem and are unaware that they have a vision issue as they believe what they are seeing is normal. That's all they know. It's not uncommon for a parent to believe they would know if their child had a vision problem. However, these issues can be hard to spot, particularly if there is a problem in only one of the eyes. This is also an opportunity to encourage parents to get sunglasses for their children. The crystalline lens in the children's eyes has less capability to filter UV than adult eyes, making them a greater risk of internal eye damage. Many age-related eye diseases may be partially caused by UV exposure throughout your life. The IC I Learn program is an outstanding program for kindergarten age children, which is offered through the Alberta Association of Optometrists. 80% of learning is visual, so as you can imagine, the impact of not being able to read properly or to see the blackboard because everything is blurry. If a patient is of kindergarten age, they qualify for this program. The parent can use Find the Optometrist feature on the Alberta Association of Optometrists website for a list of participating optometrists. The optometrist will do a comprehensive eye exam and if the child requires glasses, these will be provided free of charge. As the amount of time children are spending looking at screens, computers, tablets, smartphones, video games, and television increases at home and school, the risk of myopia also increases. There are lifelong vision impacts when children develop myopia early in life. They can develop sight-threatening diseases such as glaucoma, cataract, and retinal detachment. Children can also develop an inward-turning eye when they hold a device too close to their face within 30 centimeters for extended periods of time. There are recommended screen times to protect children's eyes at different ages and also lifestyle choices as simple as playing outdoors where the eyes return to focusing near and far. The Alberta Association of Optometrists has brochures that can be distributed free of charge. It is recommended that adults ages 19 to 64 have an eye exam a minimum of every two years. For many, the preference is annually. Given optometrists can spot the early development of many health issues. The eye is the only non-invasive place on the human body where optometrists can see what is taking place inside the body. It is really all connected. It's not uncommon to catch serious medical conditions such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease during a routine eye exam. Most eye diseases have no early signs or symptoms, so the patient will not be aware of an advancing eye disease. This is one of the key reasons annual eye exams are highly recommended, and there is Alberta health coverage available towards eye exams for those 65 and older. There are several eye diseases that optometrists diagnose and co-manage with other health professionals. Optometrists will refer to an ophthalmologist when required and often continue to co-manage the problem to ensure optimum patient care. Ophthalmologists specialize in the study, diagnosis, and treatment of eye diseases. Many are also surgeons. A few examples of advanced equipment the optometrist can use to more conclusively determine eye health concerns are shown here. The retinal camera allows an unobstructed view of the optic tissues and vessels. It is often used for diabetic retinal exams and can also reveal symptoms of other conditions such as hypertensive retinopathy, retinal tears, papilledema, and more. The optical coherence tomography allows for viewing of each of the retina's distinctive layers. Now let's look at symptoms of some of the eye diseases. You may care for patients with macular degeneration. This photo shows how macular degeneration causes the center of vision to blur or distort while the side or peripheral vision remains unaffected. 
It is generally related to the aging process and is the leading cause of blindness in North America in adults over the age of 55. There is currently no cure, but there are treatments to help try to preserve the vision. From a prevention perspective, lifelong UV protection and good nutrition are believed to play key roles. Living a healthy lifestyle by keeping blood pressure down, reducing fatty foods intake, and not smoking are all recommended. Research indicates the more that people smoke and the longer they smoke, the higher the risk is of developing macular degeneration. Researchers speculate smoking increases the number of damaging chemical compounds and reduces the number of protective nutrients delivered by the bloodstream to the eye. Smoking also reduces blood and oxygen to the eye. The good news is that observational studies indicate former smokers have only a slightly increased risk of developing macular degeneration compared with those who have never smoked. You may hear individuals talking about having surgery to remove cataracts. Cataracts are a function of aging and are most often found in people over the age of 60, although they are occasionally found in younger people, including newborns. With cataracts, the normal clear lens within the eye becomes cloudy. Risk factors include injury or disease, excessive exposure to UV radiation and sunlight, cigarette smoke, and certain medications. Currently, there is no proven method to prevent cataracts from forming, but wearing quality, UV blocking sunglasses is of tremendous benefit and a diet rich in antioxidants such as vitamin A, C, E, zinc, selenium, and magnesium can also be beneficial. Not smoking is also a way to prevent age-related cataracts. Glaucoma is often called the silent thief as there is usually no symptoms until the individual experiences peripheral vision loss. It is a progressive disease that most frequently occurs in individuals over the age of 40, with the risk of disease increasing with age. There is also a greater risk of developing glaucoma for people with diabetes, high blood pressure, a history of eye injuries, or a family history of glaucoma. There is no way to prevent glaucoma, and a comprehensive eye examination with an optometrist is the only way to detect that disease early. Even if a person sees well or doesn't wear glasses, regular eye exams help detect glaucoma early enough to prevent vision loss. Early detection of all eye health issues is key to limiting the impacts in treating eye disease. Patients with diabetes may suffer a host of problems including issues that affect the eye such as diabetic retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy occurs when there's a weakening or swelling of tiny blood vessels in the retina of the eye resulting in blood leakage, the growth of new blood vessels, and other changes. If diabetic retinopathy is left untreated, blindness can result. In the early stages, retinopathy is often without symptoms, so annual eye exams are the best way to detect changes. As many as 1.5 million Canadians are living with undiagnosed diabetes. Optometrists can examine the tiny blood vessels in the eye and often see indicators of diabetes in the eyes before the disease is formally diagnosed. As well, diabetes can cause changes in nearsightedness, farsightedness, and premature presbyopia, which is an inability to focus on close objects. It can result in early cataracts, glaucoma, paralysis of the nerves that control the eye muscles or pupil, and decreased corneal sensitivity. Visual symptoms can include fluctuating or blurring of vision, occasional double vision, loss of visual field, and flashes and floaters within the eye. From a prevention perspective, stable blood sugar reduces the risk of developing diabetic retinopathy. This reinforces the reason it's important to encourage patients to monitor and maintain control of diabetes. Patients should see a family physician regularly and follow instructions about diet, exercise, and medication. An optometrist and physician can work with the patients to co-manage the disease. Red eye can be caused by many things. It can be viral or bacterial or caused by an allergic reaction. There can also be an underlining etiology. A slit lamp pictured here on the left is an important tool in helping to diagnose exactly what is causing the red eye. 
It is very important to ensure this is dealt with by an optometrist to determine the underlying causes so the correct medical treatment can be applied. Dry eye symptoms can result from the normal aging process, hormonal changes, exposure to certain environmental conditions, problems with normal blinking, or from medications such as antihistamines, oral contraceptives, or antidepressants. Dry eye can also be a symptom of general health problems such as arthritis or can result from UV exposure and environmental irritants. If dry eye is left untreated, it can be harmful. Excessive dry eye can damage and possibly scar the sensitive corneal tissues of your eye, impairing vision. Common dry eye symptoms include stinging, gritty, scratchy and uncomfortable eyes, fluctuating vision, and sometimes a burning feeling or feeling something foreign within the eye. In moderate to severe cases, dry eye symptoms can lead to blurred vision, light sensitivity, or even periods of excessive tearing. Tearing is a natural reflex of the eyes to create more tears to comfort the eye in response to dryness. Dry eye is a chronic but treatable disease. Although there is no cure, optometrists can offer treatment to manage the conditions and improve comfort. Artificial lubricating eye drops, ointments, and take-home therapies may be used. There are a variety of medicated eye drops that may be recommended. New procedures such as intense pulse light, radio frequency, blefex, or instruments that utilize a combination of directed heat and pulsatile pressure to the eyelids work to relieve obstructions of the meibomian glands and reduce inflammation. In cases of aqueous deficient dry eye, small plugs may be inserted in the corner of the eyelids to slow drainage and loss of tears. Any underlying systemic diseases also must be treated. Changing or supplementing a diet to increase the intake of omega-3 fatty acids and reducing systemic inflammation can also be helpful. New prescription medications are now available to help the body produce more of its own tears. Almost everyone sees a few floaters at one time or another, and they may be more frequent with age. They may also appear along with flashes of light. A sudden increase in floaters can be an indication of more serious problems such as a retinal hole, tear, or a detachment and should be checked by an optometrist. Some of the most subtle effects on vision that can be watched for are patients having difficulty focusing on near objects or on digital devices after a concussion. More serious outcomes are blurry vision, double vision, eye strain, and sensitivity to bright lights. Optometrists routinely work with healthcare providers to develop strategies to help patients. Falls are the leading cause of serious injuries among seniors, and seniors with low vision are more than twice as likely to fall. Unfortunately, one in three Albertans over 65 will fall this year, and 78% of Alberta seniors who are hospitalized with an injury have suffered a fall. As most people age, their vision needs change. Some noticeable changes include identifying objects is more challenging, especially at night, Judging distance is more difficult. Everyday tasks like reading take more effort or require glasses. Colors are less bright and the contrast between colors is less noticeable. Visual fields begin to narrow, which may lead to challenges with driving. And fewer tears are produced, leading to burning or stinging dry eyes. Some actions that can be taken to improve and protect vision and prevent falls include using high wattage light bulbs, the use of night lights or motion sensors in the bathroom and hallways, marking the edge of stairs with colored paint or treads, keeping the lighting similar in every room, checking with an optometrist about multifocal lenses, and ensuring eyeglass prescriptions are correct. There can be reactions to medications such as blurred or double vision. It is important to speak to the prescribing doctor about these reactions immediately. Whether it's a family doctor or optometrist, they will want to know and can work through other options with you. It is not only beta carotene found in carrots that can improve vision. There are few superfoods that have been identified which may protect and help maintain eye health. The lutein and zeaxanthin found in leafy green vegetables such as kale, spinach, 
broccoli, and lettuce protect the eyes from light-induced oxidative damage, which can lead to the development of an incurable eye disease called age-related macular degeneration. Encourage patients to incorporate these foods into a well-balanced diet. A new study from the American Academy of Ophthalmology indicates that exercise prevents serious eye diseases such as macular degeneration, glaucoma, and diabetic retinopathy. Moderate exercise of 30 minutes for five days a week is recommended. And for patients with diabetes, physical activity can help keep their disease under control. Moderate physical exercise, like going for a walk three times a week, can help lower the intraocular pressure and improve blood flow to the retina and optic nerve, which helps eyes stay healthy. Regardless of age, it is important to protect the eyes from ultraviolet radiation, the invisible rays of energy emitted from the sun 365 days a year. It is just as important to wear sunglasses in winter as it is in summer. When eyes absorb too much UV light, it can lead to serious eye conditions such as cataracts, retinal damage, growths on the front of the eye, and eye cancers, especially on the delicate skin surrounding the eyes. Optometrists can recommend the best sunglasses for an individual's vision needs and lifestyle. Enjoy the great outdoors in all seasons. As discussed, LPNs play an important role in supporting eye health in patients. They can promote regular checkups with an optometrist, help patients understand how good eye health can be achieved, and also create awareness of eye diseases and problems that may assist in preventing falls. The Alberta Association of Optometrists website has a tool to find local Alberta optometrists. You can find an optometrist through Google search or go to the association website and click on doctors and then find an optometrist. Then enter a postal code and a list of optometrists in the area will come up. Thank you for the interest you have taken in this important topic. If you have any questions regarding this video presentation, please contact the CLPNA practice team at practice at clpna.com.